name is Ned Humbley. I'm Director of Public Works. Obviously, we're here to discuss North Street tonight. Uh, I want to introduce a few people. Uh, Jim Laurel, our city engineer, is here. Uh, Dave Letter, the senior engineer who's in charge of this project, along with Laura Hansen, our transportation engineer, and Felix Harvey, another civil engineer in our uh, Northampton Engineering. So they're all working hard on this project, and um, I'll let them take it from here. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Ned. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome. I'm glad to see uh, so much interest in uh, North Street. I uh, hope we didn't take anybody away from their voting duties today, although it is uh, not really a priority. It's, well, I suppose it's a priority, but it's not the, um, the outcome is probably not going to have a significant bearing on the upcoming election. <coughs> that being beside the point here. Um, Laura, do you want to next slide? you want to turn the lights? So uh, this evening we wanted to provide you with an update on the status of the North, Re North Street reconstruction project. Um, I wanted to point out that uh, the presentation that you're about to see uh, is available on the NorthamptonMass.gov DPW engineering website. So you'll be able to review the presentation. There are copies of the presentation up at the front of the table if you haven't uh, received one already. The website also has a PDF of the three plans that you see at the front of the room here. So you can download that PDF and take a closer look at uh, different concepts that uh, we'll be proposing this, uh, this evening. The main point of, uh, of this uh, gathering is to let you know uh, where we are in terms of the project. The intention is to move ahead with a full reconstruction of North Street uh, beginning uh, this construction season. And uh, I think, uh, why don't you move to the next slide, Laura, if you would. Just to sort of put things in perspective, I'm sure most of you are fairly <coughs> familiar with the history, but for those of you who might not be, uh, back in about 2007, <coughs> North Street uh, became a priority for paving. The uh, city has uh, uh, takes stock of all the roadways throughout the city and um, <clears throat> looks at the condition of the roadways. And as they deteriorate, the ones that are in the poorest shape come to the top of the list. And as I'm sure you're all aware, North Street certainly is uh, due uh, to be repaved altogether. And we actually, the engineering department, completed a survey, <clears throat> a limited survey, of North Street in 2008 with the intention of just repaving the street in 2009. So I know that created some anticipation on uh, your part as residents that the condition would be improved several years ago. <clears throat> what happened was that uh, every year Bay State Gas does a number of projects throughout the city, and in 2009, they let us know that they intended to replace the gas line uh, along North Street, and you probably all remember that construction as well. So that delayed the repaving a little bit. In uh, June of 2010, we had a public information meeting that some of you may have attended. Uh, there were 27 people there. And we tried to, at that point, start to get some neighborhood input on what you wanted to see out there in terms of uh, in terms of uh, improvements to North Street and what the issues were from your point of view. Uh, traffic calming was discussed uh, at that point, and <clears throat> we also began to look more closely at the utilities that were under the street. And uh, as a result of that <coughs> investigation, we discovered that it was really going to be worth our while um, to um, replace the water, sewer, and drainage utilities that. Uh, have been in the ground for quite some time. Um, in October of 2010, um, there was uh, your counselor at the time, Angela Plasman, conducted a website survey regarding traffic calming. And uh, some of you also may have responded to that. We actually had a quite good response. There were 74 responders, and there were 22 different potential improvements that were listed and ask people to uh, rank those and prioritize them. When we sifted through the data, 
what we found was that the highest priorities were pedestrian safety, accessibility, uh, drainage, and reducing truck traffic and planting more trees were also high on the list. <coughs> And then uh, slightly below that were uh, bike lanes and uh, improvement to pavement and curb, cur to uh, curbing and pavement markings. So we took all that into account. Uh, next slide. And in uh, early 2011, um, we actually I sort of jumped ahead a little bit here, but uh, in early 2011 we uh, were had confirmed that basically the utilities needed to be improved, the underground utilities, and that actually put off the reconstruction of North Street because it was going to increase the cost, the overall cost for the project, and we didn't have enough uh, funding available to be able to expand the project in that year. And as a result, uh, Con Street uh, reconstruction took priority last year, and I think you can see the benefits uh, of that. It's, uh, that's a real artery in the city, and uh, not that North Street isn't, but it's, uh, Con Street is, is really a major artery in the city, and it was a good thing that we were able to complete that last year. But now um, North Street has risen to the top. I guarantee you this is our project, uh, not only for this year, but probably moving into 2013 uh, as well, because of the scope and size of the project. So, as I say, in uh, the summer, this beginning this summer, we're expecting to begin construction. And uh, I know it's pretty rough out there, but it's going to get worse before it gets better because of all the <coughs> underground utility replacement work that is going to be um, undertaken in conjunction with the project. So, this evening, some of you that came uh, a little early, you were able to see that we have a few conceptual designs uh, up front <coughs> on paper. Um, you're welcome to stay after and take a look at that, but as I say, those uh, designs are also available on the website, and you can, <coughs> at your leisure, take a little bit closer look. They are conceptual at this point, but we're trying to um, bring in some of the issues that uh, were brought to us at the last uh, input meeting in uh, 2010 and from the web survey and uh, try and balance that against our funding availability and uh, what we can conceivably do out in North Street. <clears throat> so um, this is what we're looking for in terms of uh, underground utilities. Uh, you know, we're going to be replacing structures uh, for sewer and for drainage. Uh, there will be water line improvements. This is actually a really rather <coughs> shallow trench, uh, so we can expect that there's going to be um, some serious disruption in terms of uh, construction activities on the street. Our intention will be as much as we can to maintain one-way traffic on the street throughout construction. Uh, no doubt there will be situations where detours uh, will be required. Uh, we'll have a police presence uh, when necessary, and uh, we'll be sure that everything is, is well um, marked and signed, whatever the activities uh, are that are being undertaken. Obviously, we can't do construction uh, throughout the street all at once, so it will be progressing from one end of the street uh, <clears throat> to the other, and that may actually happen several times if the contractor chooses to work one utility at a time. So the impacts are going to be localized on any given day, and we'll do our best to uh, work with residents to make sure that they can get in and out of their uh, residences um, when the construction is underway. Uh, I see a hand in the back there. Uh, if I could, uh, I'd like to hold questions until I've run through uh, what we have to present here. It shouldn't take uh, too long, but uh, some of the questions may be answered in the course of, of the description this evening. So one of the improvements that we're looking to do is to, uh, uh, there's no pavement markings uh, to speak of on North Street right now, and uh, we're looking at putting a, a double yellow center line and a fog line to uh, better define the travel lanes on North Street. Uh, this actually has uh, some uh, impact on traffic coming as well. There are only 11 foot wide travel lanes. so. People pay a little bit more attention to where the roadway is if they have a clear uh, striping provided. <clears throat> this is, uh, I believe, uh, West Farms Road. Uh, some of you may have traveled on that. And uh, 
I think that's, that was a road that also needed a tremendous amount of improvement. Next floor. Um, another improvement for traffic calming and for further defining the roadway is to have uh, a consistent curve throughout. Right now, North Street has a wide variety of curbing. There's some granite curbing down near the Market Street end. There's some cast concrete curbing uh, towards that end of North Street as well. Then we move up and it changes to bituminous concrete, and you'll see that there's very little reveal left, um, which means that the curbing is very close to the same level of the pavement. So drivers don't really have a sense of, of a clear definition of the edge of the roadway. And there are also areas of North Street where, in fact, there's no curbing at all, but particularly along the cemetery. So uh, that, uh, <clears throat> again, allows people to have a sense that there's more roadway available than, uh, than there actually is. So once we actually can place some curbing and define the roadway, that should also help with uh, calming traffic. <clears throat> There, as I mentioned, there is uh, bituminous, or there is a granite curb uh, sort of between Market Street to Highland Avenue, but some concrete curb on the opposite side. It would be nice if we have the funding to be able to remove and reset that granite and to uh, provide granite on the opposite side and uh, give that more of a look that's uh, consistent with what we have downtown, uh, closer in that area. <clears throat> The, most of the side streets along North Street have granite curbing uh, on the radiuses as they uh, transition from North Street to the side street. So what we'd like to be able to do is to reuse that granite curbing and then have bituminous concrete curb running along the, the main line runs there starting about Highland Avenue. One of the other, uh, this is a picture of, of Lincoln Avenue here uh, where it meets North Street and you can see there's granite curbing along the radius here and um, <clears throat> the layout, the roadway width that uh, is under the control of the city varies on North Street uh, somewhat considerably and as you probably know the roadway widens quite a bit um, mark where it meets Market Street and also where it meets Lincoln Avenue. So one of the things that we're proposing to do is to actually, for, as a traffic calming measure, to um, actually bring the roadway out a little bit here at Lincoln Avenue and make this a tighter radius so that people have less of a tendency to want to try to speed around the corner there. So this is um, the Market Street end. We've got North Street turning around the corner, going underneath the trestle here. You can see the nice granite curbing here that we'd like to be able to remove and reset. But this opening from here to here is really quite broad. And as you know, people tend to come around the corner here rather quickly. Uh, so one of the options that we've looked at is, uh, again, trying to um, tighten up the throat of, of North Street where it makes this turn and bring, bring the roadway out here. We're somewhat limited in the sense that we still need to be able to allow uh, trucks, the smaller trucks that are allowed on that section of North Street, we need to make sure that they can still make that turn without impeding oncoming traffic coming the other direction on North Street. Um, up at the other end of North Street, um, we have, uh, this is an example of a drainage issue that we would like to try to address. We're on Bates Street looking uh, at the school bus on Day Avenue here, and you can see there's uh, substantial puddling in here. The, um, actually, if I go back in the history a little bit further, back in 2006, some of you may remember that between uh, this point and Lincoln Avenue, there was replacement of a sewer line and upgrading of a water line. So we don't really need to do any deep infrastructure work in that section, and the intention would be to just do a mill and overlay uh, in that section so we, we wouldn't uh, be taking up the entire roadway for what's called a full depth reconstruction. But the full depth reconstruction is being proposed from Lincoln Avenue all the way up to Market Street. <coughs> Even though this would be just a mill and overlay, we can do uh, some selective um, more full depth reconstruction in this area and we've looked at the drainage and we believe that we'll be able to correct that through some grading so that we can get this area to drain away.
as far as sidewalks are concerned, it's a similar story as uh, to the curbing. We have some concrete sidewalk down near the Market Street end. Some of it is in uh, good condition. Some of it is in poor condition. Some of it has bituminous laid over top of concrete. It's a whole mixed bag out there. And uh, again, if funding allows, the intention would be to um, where the concrete needs to be replaced where it exists, replace it in kind, probably up to about Highland Avenue, again, to give that more of a sense of transition to downtown and the upgraded sidewalks and, and the granite curbing. Uh, beyond that, it's primarily bituminous concrete, and uh, for <clears throat> um, expense reasons, there's, uh, we really can't afford to do concrete sidewalks throughout. So the intention would be to run bituminous sidewalks um, further up North Street, uh, heading towards Bates Avenue. There would be, at the new crossings, however, we would have the handicapped accessible ramps, and our um, intention at this point is to do concrete uh, ramps there. And you can see, again, the granite curb radius provides a good definition at the edge, edge of the roadway. This is a sidewalk extension just up the street from North Street on Bates Avenue, right across from Coca-Cola. You may have noticed there was an extension of the sidewalk um, in front of Amherst Woodworking and the PBTA bus terminal. This is the, uh, the circle up at the industrial park. Okay, next. Um, there are a lot of beautiful trees on North Street, and we have very much in mind uh, intention to protect them. Um, you can see that some of them are very close to intruding on the sidewalk, and they have some uh, root. Um, you can see that the sidewalk has been disturbed by the growth of roots. Um, we intend to protect the trees uh, as part of the contract, and we'll do our, our best to try to deflect the sidewalks uh, around the trees so that uh, we don't so that the sidewalks have a long life and we don't have any impact on the trees. There's also a number of stumps that are along North Street. Um, most of them are within the layout. Some of them are a little bit questionable about whether they're on private property or not. I think our intention would be to remove as many stumps as possible and provide an opportunity for uh, planting some, some new trees along the way. <coughs> One of the possibilities, um, we have this uh, maple, I believe, uh, right by the cemetery that's in, in pretty poor shape, and we're proposing to, in one of the options, uh, put a sidewalk along the cemetery and provide uh, sidewalks, if we can, on both sides of, the, uh, sides of the street as much as we can. Currently, sidewalks run on both sides of the street up to Parsons, uh, street just before the cemetery, and from that point, they're on one side or the other uh, all the way up to Day Avenue. So for uh, just general walkability and pedestrian safety, um, we're hoping that we would be able to provide sidewalks along both sides of the street. As far as trees are concerned, as I said, the layout on North Street is, uh, is variable and is rather tight in spots. There's not a lot of room for a green belt uh, where we would typically plant trees but we would be open to people's interest if they would like to have trees planted by the DPW on their property um, as part of this project, uh, please let us know, but recognize that in doing so, you would be assuming responsibility for the care and maintenance of the tree because it would be on your property. The sidewalks along North Street obviously meet various walkways to different residences, and there are um, they're in various condition uh, throughout the <clears throat> uh, throughout the street. In general, uh, transitions to private walkways, the contractor would take care of the first several feet of transition. So. Uh, they would either replace it in, in kind if it's a concrete step. Uh, we would do that as part of the contract, and you wouldn't be responsible for doing that. If it's a uh, stone, we could remove and reset it. However, there's going to be some limitations uh, depending on the condition of 
what the material is, where it meets the existing sidewalk. So we may need to have discussions with people on a case-by-case -case basis to determine how best we're going to be able to work with what your situation is. <clears throat> um, other concerns regarding sidewalks, uh, in addition to trees that are close to sidewalks, we all also have uh, bushes and other plantings that uh, over the years have become overgrown and start to uh, impinge on the, the width of the sidewalk and it would be up to uh, you as property owners to um, trim or remove those plants before construction. Just as an overall note, um, in terms of the, uh, the schedule as we view it at this point, as I said, with all the underground utility replacement, uh, this is a, a long project. It's about 3,000 linear feet, uh, which is a little bit more than half a mile. And what we were in, are planning to do is to be able to do all the utility replacement this construction season and establish a base coat in the roadway before the end of the season. <clears throat> that means that construction would continue into 2013 and we wouldn't be looking at doing sidewalks or final paving and striping until 2013. So there's obviously some time to think about what your um, situation looks like in terms of how it meets the sidewalks and uh, how we, we can have a discussion about uh, how we can work with that. So it's not something you need to think about imminently. Um, back up one? Oh, yes. you do want to back up. I, I, I certainly do want to talk about crosswalks and signage. So um, crosswalks are another key to drivers when they're driving along a roadway that there's potential for interference and they should be paying attention and slowing down. Um, in the various concepts that we presented here, we presented up to seven crosswalks along North Street. Currently, there are really only two. There's one uh, at Market Street uh, between Walnut and Highland, I believe, and there's one at uh, between Parsons and Woodmont, which you can hardly tell is there mm. anymore. <clears throat> so we have uh, new standards for DPW side uh, crosswalks. You've probably seen them downtown and in various different locations. The stripes are much more visible. They're two feet wide, and along the, if they're crossing the, the main corridor, they're 16 feet long. In addition, we'd be putting crosswalk striping at all the side streets, and we would have uh, signage um, for the indicating the, the crosswalk location. You can see the example here. And uh, with the, the new standard actually in the department is to have this sign on both sides of each post so that there's great visibility for, for drivers uh, when they're approaching a crosswalk. We also have these uh, diamond triangles that provide some additional notification to drivers when they start to approach a crosswalk. <clears throat> We're also looking at upgrading all the signs along the roadway. Um, the two stop signs, the one at uh, North Street as you're making a left coming off of King Street, <clears throat> uh, we would increase the size of that as well as the three-way stop sign at the corner of Day, um, Bates, and North Street. And we would provide um, speed limit signs at appropriate locations. We also would provide, uh, if, if there's no bike lane, then we would be providing share the road signs so that people would have some awareness that they need to um, be on the lookout for bicycles and share the road with them. And then there would be advisory signs uh, at the curbs that would uh, advise people to reduce their speed uh, as they approach that curve. The speed limit on North Street is 30 miles an hour, and it's uh, not as well posted as it should be, so we'll be looking at closely at where those signs need to go so people are appropriately notified. <clears throat> We're also looking at the possibility of two raised crosswalks. Uh, this is the uh, example on Jackson Street, near the Jackson Street School. It seems to have uh, worked out uh, quite well. We're considering putting a raised crosswalk um, where the current crosswalk is between Parsons and Woodmont, and then another raised crosswalk uh, down near Lincoln. 
Those two locations, we think we can make the drainage work with those. That's the one of the important pieces as far as raised crosswalks. You're uh, potentially creating a dam in the roadway, and we don't want to create a drainage problem by adding raised crosswalks. So we think we can do that with the with manipulation of the drainage that's out there. But one more slide. The other issue is uh, emergency uh, access, and we need to discuss raised crosswalks uh, with fire and police to make sure that uh, this isn't an issue for, for them in terms of their access. North Street is actually a primary police and fire route, so we need to get them into the conversation uh, regarding the possibility of raised crosswalks. Um, and then in terms of parking, there is currently parking that's unmarked along North Street uh, between Walnut Street and Highland Avenue, and it's not very well defined, so we think it's a, it would be a good idea to actually define a few parking spaces there. Um, you can see there is a crosswalk. Actually, I forgot about this one. There's a crosswalk uh, right at Highland uh, going across Market here, and we want to make sure that there's good visibility at that crosswalk and not have people parking up to and, and within the crosswalk. There is also parking that's currently being utilized by DA Sullivan that's actually within the right-of-way, and we would like to be able to extend a sidewalk up along that side. So that would have an impact on, on their uh, current parking operations there. It's obviously not a great place for people to park. They're pulling straight in, and so you can see uh, this car, if it's pulling in to park, actually would have to be backing out into traffic, uh, which is not the best, uh, it's the most safe uh, approach. So what I'd like to do is uh, quickly just throw, uh, show you a few of the concept plans uh, that we have and uh, sort of go over some of the highlights and how that those integrate with what I've talked about in the PowerPoint. And then after that, we could uh, you know, open it up and have a discussion and have some questions. So we can zoom in on this a little bit uh, later on. I don't, probably can't read this uh, too well, but uh, this is the concept. Our first concept is basically replacement in kind. So we would be upgrading um, the curbing and sidewalks, but the proposal wouldn't be to extend the sidewalks any further. And we wouldn't do any real changes in the geometry of the road at all. There would just be, um, we, would, we would still have some improvements with uh, an 11 foot travel lane, a uh, well defined roadway with consistent curbing pavement markings and uh, better defined parking spaces up along this area right in here. <coughs> um, we would improve the signage as I discussed and uh, improve the existing sidewalks. Uh, some of the, the, the cons, the things that uh, could argue against it, is that the wide throat at the Market Street intersection, this area right up in here, <coughs> hasn't really been addressed at all. And as you can see, people have a tendency to be able to take this corner rather quickly. Um, and there's also this uh, wide throat at uh, Lincoln Avenue, where am I, right, right in here, that we uh, think would be beneficial to try to tighten up. Um, we're only showing one crosswalk here, which is basically the existing one between Parsons and, uh, and Woodmont. And uh, I think that's it. <coughs> Want to go to the second? Yeah, let's go to the second. We'll just go in an overview here. Um, I should just click this one. Oh, it did change, didn't it? Sorry. Yep. Do okay. you want me to zoom in with that? No, that's, that's fine. This is fine for now. Um, so we have the same basic pros here in terms of uh, definition of the roadway, uh, but one of the further advantages is that we've taken this corner, and you can see how we've, how we've stretched the corner out here to try to make this um, uh, a tighter uh, radius so that people would slow down coming around this corner and you can see the fog line here is actually out even a little bit bit further. The other thing that we've done here is that the, the existing conditions, the sidewalk is all the way back here. Uh, it's very tight against this house so um, we brought the sidewalk out 
uh, along the radius here provides better access to this new crosswalk in this area and also provides an area for planting a few trees, uh, some more green space behind here. Uh, we've also looked at planting some trees along the green space uh, that's available uh, just uh, from Highland uh, down to this area. And we've also <clears throat> added crosswalks, um, one at Highland, I'm sorry, one at... Uh, that's, that's Highland, okay. And uh, we still have the one here at Parsons and, and Woodmont, another one at Orchard Street, and one at Lincoln Avenue here as well. And then another one down here at, uh, at Day Avenue. We've also taken uh, this corner of Lincoln Avenue here, <clears throat> and the original uh, curbing is back, sort of at the back side of this green line. So we've pushed this out to try to make this uh, a tighter corner where people would have to slow down to make this to make this turn. Um, and we've also extended the sidewalks uh, quite a bit. The current sidewalk ends right here at the D.A. Sullivan building, and the proposal would be to continue the sidewalk all the way along up to Woodmont, and I believe it would, uh, doesn't exist here right now, it would continue up as well and provide us continuity on this side of the street all the way up to the industrial park. It, it did exist back there. It did it exist does. back there for the... And right now, the sidewalk stops at mm -hmm. uh, Parsons Street, just before the, just beyond Parsons, just before the cemetery. And the proposal would be to bring the sidewalk along all the way here and um, continue it as far as we can. When we get to Lincoln Street, there are a couple of very nice trees in here. And we really don't have a whole lot of room without realigning the roadway significantly. Uh, to be able to put a sidewalk in to make a connection here. Um, the sidewalk along, in order to get over to Day Avenue, we would have to, you'd have to follow the sidewalk up here to the crosswalk, and then you could continue back down to Day Avenue. Um, so, the yeah, so the third one. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we did take a look at trying to put a bike lane in, and <clears throat> One of the difficulties with the bike lane is that in some ways, as, as good as it would be to uh, accommodate bicycles, there's certainly not room within the layout to have a bike lane on both sides of the street. <clears throat> the other issue with the bike lane is that you're adding pavement uh, to the layout, and that allows the possibility for drivers to feel like they have more room to do what they want to do, and uh, to perhaps go faster than they they should be going. Um, <clears throat> so we, we struggled to try to squeeze a bike lane in on one side, and what we did, we did squeeze it in on the one side here, and because the layout actually pinches up at, or around Woodmont, we were only be able to get a bike lane in up to Woodmont itself. In addition, with the extra pavement width that we needed to get in here, we have <clears throat> Um, I don't know, a dozen or more utility poles that would need to be relocated outside the layout. Every one of these red dots is a utility pole that, that basically would be within the roadway. So um, we're not inclined towards trying to add a bike lane. Um, right now, the bike path essentially parallels North Street and um, there are plans in the works to actually make a connection back on Bradford Street underneath the railroad so that there would be some continuity where people would be able to uh, get from um, the Bates Avenue North Street area downtown without ever really having to go on North Street and it really wouldn't be too much out of the way. So I think, uh, why don't we <clears throat> turn on the lights, Ned, and um, we can... <coughs> Zoom in on any one of these plans if there's a particular area that people want to take a look at. And uh, I think at this point I'd like to open it up to discussion and questions. Yes. Um, maybe, you could state your, could you, maybe you could state your name. Sure. And, uh, um, my name is Dwight Beebe. I live right at the, uh, I'm in the Yellow House at the uh, top of Lincoln. Um, you don't slow down and stop, you drive into my living room. <laughs> uh, right across from Lincoln, there's a 
Yeah, that house right there. This house right here. Um, so there are a couple of things that um, I'm a little concerned about. Um, there's some other points I'd like to make, but when you were talking about uh, milling that section from, I guess, from Lincoln on up to Bates, it would basically be from this section up to here. Yeah, that that's got to be the worst place for potholes, mm -hmm. and it's <coughs> not clear to me how milling would really deal with what I think is a excuse me, I'm no engineer, but it looks like there's a very poor substrate there. Um, when it rains, when we get a lot of water mm -hmm. and the truck traffic through there, it just shreds the road. Um, and it's, it happens very, very rapidly. So this rain that we had a right. few days ago, um, you know, the road is in bad shape even now. Um, so I'm curious to know how just milling the top would work, how deep that milling should go. I mean, some of those potholes, seriously, like this deep. You and people, you know, those of us who, who drive in from the industrial uh, park side, um, people are almost driving up on the sidewalk. And the place is so bad that it really disrupts traffic. Um, so I think the combination of the continued traffic mm -hmm. through that area by trucks, as well as the poor quality of the pavement. Um, create a situation that makes me wonder how well a simple milling and repaving would actually work. The remilling that I've seen looks like it just shreds the top of the existing pavement and then puts it back down. When you remill, you're taking off an inch and a half to two inches of, of the top course of pavement, and then you're putting down new material on top of that, but you're right, you do have to have the structural integrity of the base coast of the pavement in order to uh, have it be a satisfactory <coughs> overlay. Uh, I think it's something that we should probably take a closer look at, and uh, I hear your concern on that. We were just talking about that uh, in-house today, whether or not it makes sense to uh, perhaps take up all the pavement from stem to stern. Um, so yeah. I, I hear you on that. May I say just a couple of things sure. on here? Okay, I'm sorry, I don't mean to uh, monopolize things. Um, because of where we are um, on uh, at, at that particular juncture, we um, we know how much truck traffic there is, mm -hmm. um, and they often will stop there. I've had the truckers ask me, you know, where the hell's the industrial park? Mm -hmm. And I've had to go out in the night and say, you know, down there. Um, I'm concerned about the truck traffic. Sure. Um, it's not so much the speed at which they travel, it's the uh, extent that they damage the road, and they're really in a residential neighborhood. Um, not very often do they get turned around and go down the wrong way, but I have seen them clearly come down, miss any sort of signage that's there, and travel south on North Street uh, into an area where they're going to get stuck. I don't think they can get under, you know, the, the bridge at Market, and I know for sure they can't get under the one on King Street, uh, sorry, on uh, Main Street. Um, the piece that really concerns me is, uh, my kids are pretty old. Um, most of the time they're in the room going like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I know that there are uh, two or three families that are just down um, in that yep. intersection. We're right here. <laughs> 16, <laughs> 16, children, 16 children are in that Yeah, so I've seen them, and they've done some very clever things to try and slow people down, but uh, put up some really nice original signage and things like that, handmade stuff saying, you know, you're an idiot, slow down. But um, people don't get you know, they see this giant wide road. I mean, I know we're talking about Lincoln, but they, I mean about North, but they see this giant wide road, mm -hmm. even when people park on both sides, which these folks I've noticed have started to do to kind of slow people down, they still go too fast. And between the trucks and the people who go too fast on there, and there's no stop sign at the top of Lincoln, right? So people don't have, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a place waiting for a really bad accident to occur. Right. Well, the, the stop sign at Lincoln, we would have to, there would have to be a warrant analysis in order to justify a stop sign uh, at that location. And that basically is a question of looking at the accident data and the history to find out whether or not, uh, is that my being accurate on that? 
<coughs> the other piece is that I really am pleased to see this, you know, this idea of, of pushing out both market and um, Lincoln right there. I mean, you know, people can cut way down there. And I know that people who come up from Lincoln onto North Street take advantage of that. I have to back out um, into Lincoln, and it's very um, awkward for me. It's my house, is where I choose to live, and I complain about that. But the visibility is very poor there. Mm -hmm. You know, you really are looking at people who are not expecting anybody else to show up on, on North Street when they're coming up from Lincoln. You know, so there are issues around yeah, there so that are, over you know, so need to be, I think, looked at in terms of traffic flow and so, things like that. So thank you very much. Yeah. Well, if you want to go back to the second uh, option sure. and maybe uh, zoom in uh, a little bit so we can still 100%. Let's just go down to, uh, we'll pan it down so we don't get any different look at that. And this way. <coughs> Towards the front. There you go. Right. <coughs> so this is right. <coughs> So um, just to talk for, for a second, um, the truck issue is one that's difficult, and I understand that, and uh, currently, because of the bridge downtown on Bridge Street, uh, the escape route for trucks that didn't pay attention, had a GPS that told them something different than it was supposed to, is for them to turn on Lincoln Avenue and come up into the industrial park this way. And that's one of the reasons we actually at this point haven't looked at changing this curve, because it is the current truck escape route, and we have to still allow them to be able to, to make that turn. And then maybe, Laura, do you want to say something about um, what might be in the offing and, and what the status of that is at this point? Regarding <coughs> trying to keep trucks from having to utilize that route? Yes, sure. <coughs> um, hello, everybody. I'm going to come up front here so you don't have to turn your necks around. Um, I'm actually working with District 2 with the state and UMass, it's a cooperative effort with the city for something called an overhead vehicle detection warning system. Has anybody heard of it? Yes. Okay. Um, basically, the state and the city um, have put forward some funding to use a laser detection system. The first system they're hoping to install would be on exit 19, where once a truck Exit starts the exit, a laser detects it. it has, it's been set for a certain height and a certain distance for the truck. And it automatically sends a message to a sign about 250 feet away, great big sign with wigwag lights that say, over height vehicle, no left turn. And there's probably going to be something more on the sign, like don't pay attention to your GPS. I'm just kidding. Um, I'll take because that. Because, uh, you know, in talking to the police department, they <laughs> have had to help trucks turn around several times at the intersections um, in, in Northampton. And when they're talking to the truck drivers, all of them say, we were just paying attention to our GPS. So we're trying to work on that issue also. But what happens is even though it gets updated in the computer, if somebody has an old GPS unit and they don't upgrade it, they don't get the new upgrades. So they just keep following the old routes. So we have very high hopes that this system, the overhead vehicle <coughs> detection warning system, will help out a lot with trucks not taking that left off of exit 19. So that's one location. We think right now there's four locations that can be afforded. One would also be um, on King Street, and the other would be Pleasant Street. If we have funding, we would put one on Main Street from the other direction. Um, we're looking at some additional signage for the wigwag lights before, um, if they still come down that direction, to take a left onto Holly and use that, you know, other route to get back out to Bridge Street. So we're hoping for a June installation of Exit 19. We'd like to try that first and then go to the other locations downtown. And I think we're going to try to get something in the newspaper in the next couple of months. But we're working out the details. It's looking very promising. So. Great. Thank you. That's great. You know, that's a serious problem. I mean, we live at 234 North Street. And in the summer, all night long, you can't sleep more than a half an hour. They get the intersection of North Street, I mean, Lincoln Avenue and North Street, 
they shift down and then hit the gas pedal and it charges right out of the sleep. It's terrible. And, you know, we're, the, that neighborhood is all elderly people, many of them with serious health problems. And it's, it's not funny. It's, and, you know, at one time, just up, a, a, we live at 2 on the other side of the road, there were signs, no trucks over 20 tons. And, and all of a sudden, the sign disappeared. And who took it down? I don't know, but it was gone. And if you put that sign up and find some people seriously, the GPS people, they would, they would upgrade their GPS system quickly. Well, currently, the or ordinance, re ordinance uh, says that there, the, there's, there is an ordinance from Lincoln Avenue to Market Street that basically restricts heavy commercial truck traffic. And that may be the sign that you're referring to. So yeah. there shouldn't be well, any. What happened to the sign? I can't tell you. Well, they wouldn't have taken the sign in the first place. Well, they used to. They used to. We lived there a long time. They used to. If we could have people, if I could raise your hand to speak, that would be great. Um, I believe that you had, you were, I saw your hand earlier. Just as, just as a little adjunct to the 18-wheeler traffic, which we could be here all night about if sure. we chose to, and I'll just make this very quick. I, I know there's been some attempt on the part of the city to connect with the Coke managership on the subject. I, I would just encourage the city, whoever does the communication, and I, I would like to spearhead the citizen people that might be a, a collaborative presence with the city to talk to the Coke plant about problem, you know, working out methods of communication to help the truckers get to where they need to go. This this is a big step in the right direction, step, yes. but if the GPS is and sleepy drivers at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're still going to get residential truck traffic ad infinitum until, I mean, I, I see it as a, as a question of the, the, the managership that are on the receiving end of all these trucks to be more communicative, if it's at all possible. I, I'm, I'm, it may be a, a pipe dream that they could be more communicative with the, the dispatchers and the people who send the information out with the truckers so that the truckers are equipped with the appropriate information about where to go because they're lost on many different levels. When they come off that exit, they're not lost for one or two reasons. They're lost for a whole host of reasons, which, which results in this problem that we've got. So I would only encourage the city to, and the department to talk with the Coke managership more about how to solve that and help the truckers. Yeah. Yes. Hi, I'm Valerie Gintes. I live at that intersection of Lincoln Avenue and look in your window all the time from my window. Um, <laughs> but um, I really want to speak also to that intersection. Um, and I actually want to start by saying thank you for sidewalks and crosswalks as someone that pushes a preschooler and a baby and infant around that neighborhood. And we picked this neighborhood because of its proximity to town and its affordability. And avoiding Route 9 with a preschooler and baby is a lovely thing. So being able to move towards North Street as our way to get to town is great. Um, but I really do want to speak. There are 14 children within the first four houses of Lincoln Avenue. So we are the first house on the curve. Um, and what I see 100 times a day is cars make a wide turn coming down north towards the industrial park onto Lincoln. They're looking down and correcting their curve right as they're passing all of the houses with the kids under 10. So you're talking about this? No, I'm talking the other side, coming from Market Street towards north. Right. They're making that turn and they're correcting their wide turn right as they're passing all the houses with kids. So you're, you're saying they're, they're, they're right there, right where your pointer is, is where my car's been hit more than once. <laughs> when I park on the streets. So I just, I really want to say that it is so important that before there's a tragedy with a kid or a pet, as Marion said, um, it's just so important that we figure out all the ways we can get signage, crosswalk, narrower entry. That is just, it's such a lovely street for families. There are more houses for sale on that street now, and it's tending to pull people with young kids. And I really want to make sure that intersection stays incredibly safe. And so I support any plan <laughs> that makes that happen, and I'm happy to organize however much citizen support you need to make that happen to keep <coughs> it really safe so those families can walk to town, to the bike path, and to each other's neighbors. Thank you.
Yes, I'm Joan Russell, and I live at 96 North Street. Move us down um, the other direction. Uh, my neighbor is D.A. Sullivan. I'm the fourth generation to live in this family, in this house. Um, oh, that's right. Well, you. Sorry, I'm getting there. <laughs> and I, I have a question. Um, there we go. There we go. Yes. It looks to me like, um, I know you've said this to me before, that you're not taking any of the um, land that would be property owners. Mm -hmm. But does that come at the expense of then uh, narrowing the street? Because the city has already taken part of my land. So it, there's no room there. It's all mine. Right. So, 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 so basically the, the, the street layout line is right here. You can see this uh, long line with the dot. So, so the reason that the sidewalk is um, deflected here is to protect this tree. Right, that's okay. my tree. But yeah, thank you. But otherwise, at this point, we have the, uh, the, the, the sidewalk is essentially at the back of the layout line. So, so that, that means that's where the, the street is currently now. That's, no, that's, that's where the, the, the street is currently right here. So how is that not my property? Can I just speak to that for, sure. for a moment? It looks like I, I, I remember plan, you, Felix. I nice survey plan. I, I remember actually, that, yeah. Uh, loaded that image into the drawing, yeah. and that's a fairly accurate representation of the property line. Sometimes we get confused by street and road, roadway, mm -hmm. pavement, and it's not un uncommon for people to think that they actually own, own right up to the curb line. But actually, that the street layout it goes beyond the pavement. I'm not sure the exact dimension there. We could probably scale it off the plans, and I can tell you so, where it is. So what I'm going to say to you is, back in the '50s, that part of the land you took already. So, so you've taken. It would be a double taking. In the '50s, they widened the road because there's a hydrant as you come around that corner, or going this way. And so they widened that, that curve, and, and I asked my 93-year-old father who said, yeah, it's because they, the cars were speeding around and taking the hydrant out. So from my perspective, you have already taken that part of the property, which was the city's property, and now you would be taking property that was mine. We're not taking any more property. But you are going to take some of the grass in front of my house. The sidewalk may be closer to your house than it currently is. The There's no sidewalk in no front of my house. And, and in fact, right. my contention is that we have the basic plan, concept two and three, which are more expensive, that I'm not sure that, that, that we need two sidewalks on both sides of the street. One, conti one sidewalk, one good sidewalk on either side, the way we have it now, that's good, and complies with, you know, getting baby strollers up and down would be sufficient. Um, and that there are other things in plan two and three that are important. I'm sure if we had all the money in the world, we'd be, we wouldn't be talking about plan one, two, and three. Um, so, I, and I also think that a bike lane coming down from Woodmont, as I said to you before, is important. Um, my neighbor, Marge Barnett, said she counted 73 bicycles in one hour in a nice summer day, making the right-hand turn. So I, I do have concerns, major concerns, about, and I know we're going to be in disagreement on this, taking more of the grass that's in front of my house. But do you feel that way about the neighborhood in general, or do you just feel that way about the sidewalk I in front of your house? I mean, right now there is... Uh, there is a sidewalk on one side of the road or the other throughout the neighborhood, and do you feel that that's a, that's sufficient? I, I do, do and you I feel th that we should take sidewalk away uh, from your house back toward Market Street. I don't have any sidewalk. There's no sidewalk there. I have no there's sidewalk. Nothing there. There is sidewalk. Sullivan not up. There's nothing. From from D A Sullivan back yes. towards Market Street. All the way sidewalk. Right. 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 But from D A Sullivan up to Woodbine, there's, there's no. Sidewalk. There's no. Right. 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 I understand that, but yeah. I'm just trying to understand your point of view. My, my point of view is, I think that the neighborhood, every time we've met and we've talked about this, um, that in the end, people are more interested in pri their priorities are higher in other areas than to to ensure that we have. Sidewalks on both sides of the street. And what would the best priority be? I believe the Lincoln Street is important. I think Market Street is important. 
Um, I think for some people, the bike lane, maybe not for everybody. Um, and, I, and I know that you've got a couple of things, too. Yeah, and the survey from 2010 that we did, 2010, the Survey Monkey, as well as stuff that I know we've done in the neighborhood recently, um, the sidewalk when pulling in, the citizens, pull, sidewalk on both sides actually fell below uh, improved paving. In other words, people would rather see mo more granite paving further down granite north curbing? than... Right. Sorry, did I say that? Yeah. Yeah, on the priority list, more granite curbing was actually higher than double sidewalk. But it was, I shouldn't say sidewalks aren't a priority, but mm -hmm. the distinguishing between sidewalks on both sides and having excellent sidewalks where there are sidewalks today with good crosswalks. Just as a point of comparison, uh, keep in mind we have about, so the roadway is about 3,000 feet long, and just as a point of comparison, uh, bituminous concrete curb is about uh, six times less expensive than granite curb, and concrete sidewalks are about twice as expensive as bituminous sidewalks. So I just want to make you aware that there's a, a substantial cost differential between those, those types right. of and, materials. And you did a great job explaining that in 2010. I, I'm just saying that on the priority list, that was still higher. Yeah. Okay. In the back, uh, two things. One is uh, Stephen Hathaway. I live on Northern Avenue, just on the <coughs> street. Um, and I, the first thing I want to talk about very briefly is the sidewalks that your own survey said that dominant concern of everybody is safety. Uh, almost everybody here that has spoken tonight has talked about safety. Um, sidewalks on both sides are lovely, but I've lived there for 30 years, either on Carson Street or another, Northern Ave, and the people who live there are getting along fine with them on one or the other side. Uh, I think particularly along the cemetery, whenever they have a big uh, funeral, you're going to have 50 cars that no longer have any place to park uh, that are going to collide with the side streets even more. Uh, so my personal vote would be to, and if you don't do sidewalks, you don't have to pay sidewalks. So I would rather see, spruce up the ones we got, put the crosswalks in. Bumps are great if they work. Um, the other thing is, early on in this, you mentioned the contractor possibly doing one utility at a time, and that sounds to me like a nightmare. That means we get our street ripped up once, maybe twice, maybe three times. Uh, I can't imagine why you would ever let the contractors make that decision. Well, um, that's going to be it's going to be it's going to be incredibly stressful for the people that live there. Anyways, to have our road our you know, the main way in and out ripped up three times instead of once is just, I, plus it seems to me it's got to be more expensive. Uh, it's not necessarily if they're working in one material <coughs> and, and one type of construction, it would probably be easier for them to work one utility at a time. I can't, uh, does anybody else have an opinion on that? Do you working as a utility, you, dig, you have to dig the street, you have to dig a big hole. You dig a trench. Yeah. So they dig why would you want to do that? Uh, I'd like to respond to a couple of questions that have come up. I'm not sure. And, and, and I'll get to your trench question. Yep. But the first question was about <laughs> safety and sidewalk. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name in 96. Yeah, Joe Lucille. Yeah. There's actually um, one way of looking at why we might want to extend the sidewalk there is a safety concern because that's kind of a blind curve there. And what happens is when the sidewalk ends, where do the people cross the street? And is that a blind curve? And this is sort of one of the reasons, is a safety reason really of extending the sidewalk up to Woodmont there. Um, because it, it is a safety concern. That's why. There, there's, there's a, you're coming down, you're crossing over, you've got a nice crosswalk there. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying that it comes from a safety concern to improve pedestrian safety. And that's, I'm not saying that that's the way it's going to be. We, you know, we want to listen right. to people's right. ideas about it, but it does come from that. <coughs> Another question I have is, I know that the traffic at Market Street in the afternoon is terrible. And it seems to, I don't know how this 
plan impacts or helps correct that issue? It's not going to do anything in particular to change yeah. that. I mean, you can't, um, okay. you can't regulate how people decide what routes they decide to take. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, it's a bottleneck there. Okay. Can I also finish responding to another question that came up that I'm not sure was completely answered? And that is the issue of the different utilities. It's um, uh, we, in the business, we say it is what it is. There are different utilities that we must replace. And it's a standard in the construction industry to do, um, to keep it simple, one utility at a time. Because you can't dig up the whole road and block access, emergency access to people's houses. You have to maintain the road open. So unfortunately, that means digging more than once in front of your house. Usually, it's you know several times to do various aspects of the utility work. We also can't, we couldn't possibly dictate to a contractor how he, his order of business and how he wants to approach a project. It's against construction law. There's all kinds of principles for that. What's your question? Why, why not? Why can't you make it in, in order of the, the, the We can, yeah. we have to leave order, uh, their order of work up to them. Now, there are certain requirements of the contract, for example, maintaining access to private property. So I, I thought I heard you say, well, why don't you do all the utilities at once? And that you wouldn't be able to um, allow good app access or public safety for people getting in and out of their driveway if you had the whole road dug up at once. It's just, and it's just not done that way. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of have to approach it one piece at a time. It isn't to say they won't have two, they can elect to have two crews on any given day on the job, up to two crews, I believe we allow them by contract, different sites, possibly different utilities. They may elect to do two utilities at once, but they will not probably be in the same location at the same time, but get in each other's way. So there is, go ahead. Uh, I, you know, those are all, all great points. I think uh, you should be reassured that we'll work to the, with the contractor to the extent that we can to review the facing of the work, the limit. I mean, there will be a lot of disruption. I think David made a pretty good point of saying that up front. But we'll work with the contractor to the extent that we can to sequence operations to minimize the amount of um, the amount of uh, disruption that there is to folks that live along the street. Um, there's a continuity of service. These are utilities as well, so they have to weigh that. Um, and make sure that there's a continuity of water and sewer service and things are connected um, and not disconnected for too long. So there's a lot of things that kind of go into that, but um, you know, I think it's a really good point and I think we need to be aware of it when the contractor starts to, for us to review his schedule and, and come up with a way to make sure that the work goes as smoothly as we can. Yes. Uh, There's someone in the city. I, I lived in Shelburne, uh, the village of Shelburne Falls. The engineering department will be on site uh, for daily inspections. So, so there is someone who will be there all the time one of us who will oversee this. Us in the engineering department will be there every day, um, most all the time. The other question that I have is um, I noticed that the new sidewalks, um, you know, the concrete access points and the um, I call it asphalt, it's not the right term, but That's the fine, asphalt works. sidewalks went in there. Um, I know there's a question about um, concrete versus asphalt, and I'm wondering um, if you're looking at the uh, long-term durability of asphalt versus concrete, do you save, uh, if it's six times less, I'm sorry this is, if this is not right, but if it's six times less to put in the same you know, 10 feet of sidewalk for asphalt in comparison to concrete, does the asphalt, the inexpense of the asphalt, allow you then to replace it and still be under the initial cost? So um, if you got three, you know, we have these lovely winters, I'm sure you've noticed, sure. you know, and the sidewalks, asphalt, frost heaves, all kinds of stuff happen. Um, if you need to replace that, are you still saving money compared to initially putting concrete in, which I would assume is more durable? I'm not sure that I can make a blanket statement on that. No, I'm not. But, but as, asphalt, asphalt tends to be more flexible than concrete. Concrete is not uh, not necessarily, uh, I mean, it's, it's a better, uh, more durable material, but there are problems that develop with concrete over time as well. So it eventually needs to be replaced. You'll see there's sections of concrete sidewalk. Um, 
um, on, on uh, North Street uh, along uh, near Highland Avenue end that uh, because of frost heaves, the panels are, are tipped and they've created trip hazards. Um, you know, that's also the case with the asphalt uh, along North Street, but that's primarily more due to roots uh, than anything else. So the asphalt does tend to be more flexible and, uh, you know, it, it will move with the frost and settle down again, whereas the concrete is less forgiving uh, in terms of frost. Um, I think uh, the asphalt sidewalks are, are a good quality sidewalk. They're going to last a long time. Um, I can't really say at this point, um, looking that far into the future, I don't know what the cost of asphalt is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at some point, the cost of asphalt may be comparable to concrete, uh, just given its oil content. So. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mark Sullivan at the DA Sullivan and next to Joan. Um, and a, a couple things. If there's a there's a slide actually on the presentation of one of the pictures was of our building. I don't know if you can go back to that picture and pull that up because that has some relevance. But while I'm talking about that, a um, couple things. One of the uh, right, there you go. The you can see on that the top picture that's our building. Yeah. And what, sorry, that's okay. <laughs> I went to the largest screen. That's all so right. And the, talking about the parking in front of our, there you go. The, the parking in front of our building is it's not a great situation, obviously. Um, but it's the only parking, it's not the only parking we have, but we can't take that parking away because we, those, I think there's four or five spots there. We have nowhere to put them. We've redeveloped the property and have maintained the property um, through the years um, to give us as much parking as possible. We uh, developed the third floor of our building further if we had more parking, but we're just, we're stuck. We've got nowhere to go. Um, so if a sidewalk were to go through there, that would eliminate those four or five spots and we have nowhere to put them. Uh, we've been in the building since the 40s and, and, and we haven't necessarily gotten any bigger, but parking's always been an issue. But the biggest thing is there's a loading dock right there. Um, and so obviously you can't put a sidewalk, you can't eliminate all any traffic. We try to limit as much as possible uh, the use of the loading dock there, but it's a necessity on occasion, and so we can't, we couldn't eliminate that by the by the installation of a sidewalk. There's, there's no there's no loading capability on the lot. No, because the, when the trucks, the big trucks can't get down the hill at our parking lot, so they have to back up to the loading dock where the the elevation of the loading dock matches the truck, and then we can. Unload well, that doesn't it. seem like a very safe situation. Uh, it's not North a great street situation. at all if you have a truck crossways across North Street unloading. Uh, it's, it's not a great situation, but like I say, we've been there for, for 70 years now, so and we've managed to, to work within the neighborhood. But if you, if you hold this picture, if you look at that, the, the crown of the curve, I don't know if you can tell, but from this vantage point, um, the, the curve, the, the elevation of the, that curve almost goes the wrong way. And if you can see the telephone pole right in the middle of the picture, that telephone pole has saved our building on a number of occasions, unfortunately, because to the to the drivers, because on a on a cold winter morning or late at uh, in the afternoon when the when the sun goes down and that road gets slick, cars so many times come around in this direction and they just lose it and they plow right into that uh, so telephone you're, pole. You're saying there's a super elevation that favors this side right now. Correct. And we have to look at the yeah. survey, but that's yeah. something that can be corrected. Yeah. Um, so you should just be aware of that. Uh, I don't know if when you did your grade elevations. If came to the surface, but yeah, it um, shows up on the yeah, because it's a very real issue that uh, so many times accidents have happened there. Um, I have to say that I'm not sure that we can correct that condition because of the grades on the other side and there's access to houses on the other side that are yeah. impacted by that grade as well. So we couldn't negatively impact those drivers. But we, we, yeah, I don't know what the resolution is, but I just want you to be aware that it is a, a very real situation. Thank you for that. Um, and then the other point just to bring up um, at the intersection of North and Market, I think narrowing that throat functionally is a great idea, introduce some more green space and so forth, but you said you weren't, you can't dictate which way people are going to go uh, between 4 and 5.15 at night, but I can tell you everybody goes down that street and, and the one thing that uh, the present conditions allow is for people who are going right up to North Street to kind of cheat over and people who are going straight through to Market to get around those people. If you squish that down, now that 
they're going to be queued up even further. Because on a, on a busy Friday afternoon, uh, or when the fair's in town, or a big function, you know, our, our building is, is several hundred yards away from that <coughs> intersection, and cars are, are backed up well, well past our building. Well, it's not a particularly safe situation to allow people to pass on the left to go down no. the street either. I mean, I'm right. not sure that I'm in favor of that from a safety standpoint. Right. Uh, but we'll take that into consideration. One, one thing, just a last comment on that, and what's happening to a great extent is you turn right here on that picture and you go up north, you can either go left at the light or right. right. But the road really doesn't allow for two cars to coexist right. at the same time. And so one car who's turning left can hold up everybody, and so everybody gets backed up. And again, that's your, this, these plans don't address that intersection, um, but they kind of go together. Uh, I just want to take off on that same intersection, just about the other the parking that you wanted to better define. Mm -hmm. um, this is about congestion on Market Street. Oftentimes, if North Street if that section of North Street is backed up, which it becomes almost daily, then the car is trying to take a left off of Market onto North, right. stop all the other cars that want to go straight onto North. Uh, so I, I actually think that there's enough room in the road to allow queuing of left turners off of Market and allow passing on the right. So you would, you would propose eliminating the parking spaces? I, 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 as much as I like parking, uh, maybe for, for certain hours, from you know from two to five, six or something, have no parking there, or just to be completely eliminated. Yes. Okay. That's something we can look at. Look at Charles driving. Uh, do you monitor the volume of traffic on North Street from Market Street to, uh, in terms of you know these things that you drive over and it counts the cars? <clears throat> yep. You do. Laura, I think you, did you have a couple of numbers on? Well, you know, I don't want to belabor the point, but, you know, it, I think it just seems to me that the amount of, cut, the, the, of uh, asphalt that you take off should take into consideration the amount of traffic on the road and how long is it going to take before we're right back where we are now. Well, a, a fully rebuilt uh, road with new sub-base material and two inches of base course material and two inches of top coat is going to last for a good long time. So that's what I don't want to say. You're, you, you are going to dig up the road. You're not going to just skim off the top. No, no, You're so going to dig up the whole... Okay, right. that, that, was, that was the question that came up earlier, was that we were talking about just skimming off the yeah, top. Yeah, right. From, just from Lincoln to Bates Street. Lincoln and we're going to take another look at that. Yeah. But, but we were always yeah. intending from Lincoln all the way down to Market Street to pull up all okay. the pavement and um, yeah. establish a, a yeah. good, clean base, sub-base material right. in there that's well compacted, and then put down new pavement on top of that in two courses. So right. it'll be fully rebuilt. Yeah. That's so it, essentially, it's a whole new highway system. Yeah, road system. So it's a new roadway. Yes. yes. Who hasn't spoken yet? Uh, sir. Um, my name is Joel Dansky. I live in Northern Avenue, where I've been for a uh, very plus year. Um, I, I want to express my appreciation for the crosswalks, because I'm a pedestrian, especially going down to the bus stop on uh, Sheldon Field. Um, I'm worried, I'm concerned that they be aligned properly, since, and you may have taken that into consideration in, in terms of the, you know, the crosswalk at Market Street where you walk into the post office from the mailbox. Um, that, that's the only way to get into that crosswalk. I don't know whether you're planning to use that. Um, the, uh, when you go to um, cross it from uh, at Parsons Street, mm -hmm. it's really uh, the corner, where, the place where the crosswalk is, doesn't line up with the, the um, sidewalk on the other side of the street. And so, and the people that live there shovel their driveway, which makes sense, but they don't shovel the, you know, the grassy area. So I'm just saying that. Yeah, that we would, we would definitely. <coughs> have the sidewalks. There would be continuity between the sidewalks and the crosswalks, and to make them accessible. We would have the, uh, ramps down to the street level from the sidewalk level. Um, um, let me ask one other question. I had heard in the presentation he was Wayne Fine some years ago. That there was there was talk of some kind of bicycle lanes that from under the bridge 
you know, by service, the, the, the bridge, the North Street Bridge that would connect up with um, the bike path and back of service stand. Is that in part of this project or is that a totally different thing? It's a standalone project. I see. So it won't have any impact one way or the other? No, it is at, I, Wayne's in charge of that project, the planning department is. I'm not sure where it is in their queue, but I think that's supposed to be done next year or so, that link. My name is Ann Creeley. I'm at 50 North Street. And um, I don't really have anything to bring up except to just kind of, it, it's clear there's a lot of kinks that have to be worked out. And I feel particular sympathy for the problems of parking at DS Sullivan and Joan, your problems in front of your house. But I think these things can be worked out. And I just want to express my gratitude to everybody that's worked on this, these proposals. And it represents an incredible effort. And I just want to thank you. Uh, Carl Kinnear, I live at uh, 47 Lincoln Avenue, uh, as Valley Nota. Uh, I've got three kids uh, under the age of four, uh, along with a bunch of other kids. Uh, so we, we're big users of the sidewalks when people downtown. Uh, so uh, speaking to it, but I wanted to say thank you. I know this has been a long standing thing. As, we, as you've covered, we've been working on this for several years. Uh, and I know it's a lot of hard work. These are, these are nice drawings, and so I just want to appreciate that. Um, in general, I think these plans are all great. Um, personally, I, I don't think we need to spend all the money on some of these additional things. I really like starting off your base plan um, with the improvements to, um, I don't know which, what verb you would use to that Lincoln intersection, straightening it out or pushing it out. <laughs> the throat. The throat. The throat. I like it. Um, and then the improved crosswalks, uh, especially like the idea of raised crosswalks, I think. Most of us would agree, as much as we don't like the trucks at the Lincoln Avenue, we really don't like the trucks. What scares me much more than the slow, loud trucks are the really loud, fast, or sorry, the, the fast, uh, mm -hmm. uh, personal cars. Um, and really, that's it. Um, just good crosswalks um, and slowing people down. Um, Wendy Newton, I live at 211 North Street, right by between Lincoln and Grant there. Um, I want to put one thing on your radar. We have a mixed-use building, and there are 20, 21 parking spaces in our 25. 25 parking spaces. Cars are in and out all day. When cars are parked along North Street um, on our side, uh, there is no sight line if we want to turn right. That also goes straight to Lincoln. We also have a therapeutic community in our building on the ground floor, which has huge amounts of bike and pedestrian traffic in and out all day. I would say 60 to 70 ins and outs during the course of the day. If there would be any way to put an additional traffic calming entity of, of anybody's choice there to protect the people, the clients of this organization and the, and the people who come and go uh, to treat them, um, at that st stage, in addition to to the crosswalk, the raised crosswalk walk at Lincoln for the children, it would be very important and and uh, life <coughs> life saving at that place. But I, I needed to get that on your radar because it's quiet and and a lot of people aren't aware yeah, that that exists there. The old, yeah, the old twin cleaners. The um, there's a big parking lot. There's one bi one business. <coughs> with an entrance on North Street, and that business, uh, that's on the Lincoln side, that business parks its cars on North Street. This business, yeah. No, no, no. That's no. A, that's 211. 211. Yeah. yeah, they park along North Street facing Lincoln, which may slow traffic, but it also makes uh, a complete absence of sideline for anyone pulling out of that parking lot and trying to turn right, and that's where the children are, so that's where the pets walk, and it's a, uh, it's, okay. Well, that's, that's something that uh, currently, I believe, the ordinance allows parking on this side of Lincoln. And uh, we would have to revisit the ordinance, and it would make sense to pick a location somewhere far enough back that this allows parking from here down to Lincoln so that uh, sight lines could be uh, maintained. I mean, one advantage in terms of traffic coming for, for allowing some on-street parking is that that actually is a traffic calming uh, measure. I travel Prospect Avenue uh, every day, and you're actually allowed to park on both sides of that. And uh, 
it gets a little tight now and again when you have two cars that have decided to park um, very close to each other along the street. Uh, but it definitely, you can tell that it does uh, settle down people's... Uh, I did want to draw your attention to the in and out of 70, 60 to 70 bikes and pedestrians. Many of the clients of the therapeutic organization live in the neighborhood and they come on foot. The rest come on bikes and we have a bike rack that they can use. They're, they're uh, transitioning bikes from client to client and it's constant along with the people who treat them. So That's great. I think Thank you. That's good. Jason lives near Home, 173 North Street. Um, one of my primary concerns is when we're talking about redoing the waterways and the utilities, is making sure that I have water and I have the utilities running. And whenever they get to an area, and I know there's going to be probably some time where I'm not going to have those, and I'm going to need to know that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Communications will be well in advance, and there may be situations where we're, the contractor will be required to provide temporary water. So they may need to work for a long enough stretch of time that they'll actually put in a temporary uh, water supply for, okay. for people. I'm sure everybody else that lives there is worrying about that too, but. For different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to respond to the shut off. Yeah. Hopefully, we don't. The water shut offs are not for very long, so we'd be given plenty of notice about it. Mm -hmm. But they're typically um, just an hour. an hour or two at major connections at intersections, so perhaps you would be subject to that. Well, I'm on the corner of Orchard and North, so I'm on that. Major, major water. Okay, major water. Yeah. 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 We, we um, phase those construction activities. For example, the temporary water is often a big one that's happening, and we'll be talking to individual residences and businesses about this, making that connection. But during those switchovers, and sometimes it's 10 minutes, the major connections can sometimes be an hour or two. Okay. So, but we'll give you notices. Good question. Um, one other thing is you know, mentioned before with. Um, whether you're not thinking about putting a sidewalk by the cemetery, a um, couple things. Who's going to be plowing that if you do? The city. Um, city, sure that city property. So. <laughs> yeah. um, and that would be something, if, again, with um, a lot of people, besides whatever now and then when we have a big funeral, people do park there. Um, back years ago before we put in the, the bigger parking lot, everybody used to park there. Um, but there's also, I know, a lot of um, families that use that for their parking that are on North Street with multifamilies, and there's a lot of people that um, might be losing their parking spaces, which I don't know whether that affects well, anything we, there, but I do feel for them also. Um, I'm kind of in the belief that we really don't need sidewalks on both sides of the street, as long as you do have proper places to cross because I remember looking at this in the paper going, oh, we're going to replace, you know, the existing uh, uh, walkways. And I'm going, where do we have a walkway? Because again, like you said, like um, by Parsons and everything, you can't really see any of the pedestrian crosswalks. So I think that would help a lot just having the crosswalks, um, especially the new ones that you designed, um, and then making the existing sidewalks proper. Uh, you should keep in mind that the, the crosswalks are dependent on having a sidewalk to go to. So the fewer sidewalks you have, the fewer crosswalks you're going to have because there won't be any place for them to connect to. Well, there's, okay, so there's, there's balance there that needs to be considered. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the parking along the cemetery, keep in mind that people, the ordinance currently allows people to park on that side of, of North Street. If we put uh, a curb in at that point, it's a place that expect to put one in, they'd still be able to park up against the curb there, and that's what I was talking about earlier, about the possibility of on-street parking actually being a traffic calming measure okay. by further so narrowing park there. Yeah. the street. So obviously during snow emergencies, they're in the same boat as everybody else, yeah. but they would be, in any case, even where they can pull off to the side <clears> right now. But that area is, is really ill-defined at this point with, uh, with no curb. Thank you. Yes, you were trying to say it's okay. for quite a while. Uh, I'm at 125 North, right on the corner of Parsons Street. 
Um, and I just wanted to touch on a couple of small things that a lot of people already spoke about already, but especially like Mr. Sullivan and D.A. Sullivan spoke about the chamber of the road <coughs> outside of his business there. The sidewalks are in the same situation where on the sidewalks that are there now have a pretty severe camber to them when you're, I'm, I'm pretty sure-footed and I walk that all the time in the winter and I almost end up in the road from sliding right off the sidewalk because it's at a, such a severe uh, angle on that side of the road. So I think that's something that really need, the engineers really need to look at that area and that bend in the road mm -hmm. to try to get things uh, leveled off a little bit better there. Yeah, so sidewalks, whenever sidewalks get constructed, they're required to construct them to ADA standards right. and one of the um, limitations there is the cross slope can't be more than one and a half percent. We do want the, the sidewalk to, uh, to essentially be level, but we don't want it to we want it to be able to drain, to be able to drain right. water as well, yeah. but not tip so much that it's uh, not and, and some of the other people that have lived on North Street much longer than I can probably remember better than I can, but I seem to remember the, the last time that North Street was resurfaced, it didn't last more than a couple of years before it was falling apart again. I mean, that's been going back decades now, but still. Well, this, as I said, this is a much different approach. It's not a resurfacing. It's a full depth reconstruction that provides the sound base underneath the asphalt that will be well compacted before we put down two new layers of asphalt. So it should uh, last quite a long time. I also wanted to touch briefly on the, uh, the truck situation, which I understand down in Lincoln, because that is the marked truck route that it's a, it's still a big concern for the residents there about how it's being used. But we also, and I've noticed on Bridge Street, the other through streets like um, Grant and Elizabeth are marked no trucks. There's a big sign, no trucks. But when you get down to, I don't know if it's still called Parsons Street, where you turn in for Bridge Street School, mm -hmm. no sign. Mm -hmm. So we get car trucks, 18-wheelers coming up Parsons Street. Parsons Street? Wow. Terribly. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Actually, we, we lost uh, telephone and power um, for hours uh, last month because trucks took the tree, took the branches off the trees and took down all the wires. Um, and uh, my son's uh, girlfriend lost her side mirror off her car, you know, from trucks. And the, the person across the street from me on North, the front of their, the, of their uh, yard is completely torn up because the 18-wheeler is trying to take the turn off of Parsons onto North to head toward the industrial park. It's just a mess. It's, I mean, they've been they've been stuck out there for a half an hour, and we had a truck when after the big storm in October, uh, the house at the top of Woodmont lost one of its big trees. So the people that lived there were parking on Parsons Street, and the, the trucks couldn't make the turn at all, and they ended up having to back all the way back down Parsons Street to get out of there. I mean, they had the whole place locked up for an hour. So I mean, I'd like I to think, respond to your first question. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Sure. Before uh, this. This area that's been brought up a couple of times where you say the sidewalk is too steep and a super elevation of the road, we do uh, attempt to meet the ADA guidelines uh, everywhere that we can. There are some places where you're forced into a situation where you can't meet them mm -hmm. to the letter of the guideline. Um, but I, we're trying to improve that, all the sidewalks. But that situation right there with D.A. Sullivan and that super elevation of that roadway, um, while we may be able to improve it a little bit, we're not, it's impossible to raise mm -hmm. private property and lower it on mm -hmm. opposing sides of the road. And so we have to, we're, de we're dealt a hand we'll and must deal with it yeah. and try to do our best with it. But we're looking at that really hard and, and we'll do our best there. Right. <coughs> Howard Gold, I live at 212 North Street, right across from um, Wendy 211 at the corner of Woodbine. Uh, first, I want to uh, also express my support for the narrowing of Lincoln. I think that's a terrific idea in light of. I mean, obviously to promote safety, I think that's a no-brainer. Um, but I had a question in connection with kids and safety. If you go down north uh, toward <clears throat> Bates and Day, for years there's been a school bus stop at the corner of Bates and Day. Mm -hmm. And so how do kid, how are kids, how should kids cross the street? From, from Bates? Walking along north, say, a lot of kids walk along north that way toward Bates mm -hmm. and Day. So where is the crosswalk? So I, there was a, uh, I, I saw a school bus. Well, that's exactly yeah, that's where the bus stop is. It's been there for years. Okay. So um, this new cross proposed crosswalk here would solve that situation. Okay. There's existing sidewalk that continues right. uh, up to this. There's, it's actually a difficult place to put a crosswalk. We, 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 we struggled with this a little bit. There's a driveway <coughs> here, and there's a driveway here, and there's a driveway directly mm. across the street here. 
So the best location that we could see was to extend the sidewalk slightly further right. out of Bates and provide a crosswalk here. <coughs> it's uh, a little bit of project creep. We weren't planning to go this far <coughs> down Bates right. in order to try to get a crosswalk here. Yeah, and I think that's very important. The only thing is, is how many kids have you actually seen who are going to walk? I know my son. Well, you know, he's not going to walk down there and cut across. He can barely get out of bed in the morning and find his way down the stairs. You know, he needs the most direct route to the bus stops possible. I, I like the idea. I shouldn't, but, you know, kids. Uh, Tom McCurry, 193 North Street, corner of Elizabeth Street and North Street. Just a couple of things I'm meaning to mention. It's nice to have additional sidewalk sidewalks. Do whatever you can. I recognize certain constraints that probably were not going to work very well. I would personally rather see better curbing. You mentioned bituminous concrete. I question the durability of, of that over time. Um, I find that the, the granite is obviously the best. It's obviously the more, more expensive way to go. Um, another thing that hasn't been mentioned, and I recognize it's not part of this project, but I want to just throw it out here for the general statement. We should be looking at underground utilities, including the electrical wires, in projects of this sort, given the, the problems we had back in October. This should be a policy to include these things in, if you care about trees, get the wires under the ground and let the trees be trees, rather than having to hack them in half, the way we saw in one example there. Do you want to say anything about that, Ned? Uh, yeah. Underground utilities are extremely expensive to install. Uh, you look in, most times you see underground utilities are in downtown areas or in newer subdivisions. Right. Because that's what the subdivision rules and regulations require. Not when the city was developed, you know, two, 200 years ago. So uh, it's a very expensive proposition, and I think that the electric companies, utility companies, would fight heavily against that because th that would be at their expense. We couldn't afford to put those underground. I'd like to just say one thing about the, uh, the curbing as well. You're, you're absolutely right that granite curb is much more durable uh, than bituminous. Uh, one thing that we're, that we're proposing is that, uh, and, and you, if you look out on North Street, you'll see that as, as you make transitions to the side streets along those curves, you'll see that there, in a lot of places there is existing granite curb there, and we're proposing to reset and reuse that and put granite at all those radiuses, because those are the places where the plows have the most impact uh, when they're when they're plowing the streets. It's at the head of the streets where they're pushing the snow back and making those turns. So we're trying to find a compromise that um, allows us to make it affordable um, as well as provide some durability. We can also, in the uh, bid package, we can uh, put in uh, <coughs> granite curb as an alternate to see what kind of price premium we'd have to pay to do that, and then we have to make a decision based on the available budget as to whether or not granite would in fact be, be affordable. Yes. I'm John Fry, 16 North Street. Um, first of all, a question for you all. The three proposals, are they as planned, um, similar costs? We haven't developed uh, full depth costs yet. Um, we have a general overall sense. We're looking at uh, this project is going to be probably at least a million and a half dollars. Um, we haven't gotten down to some of the details uh, yet. We're just working on quantities now. Obviously, some of that is going to be variable depending on the, how any of these concepts get developed. If you have less sidewalk, the cost will go down. If you put granite curbs in, the cost is going to go up. Um, <clears throat> we're doing some investigation on some of the water uh, utilities right now. There may actually be a stretch of pipe that uh, is going to be worthwhile to leave in place and to uh, actually ream out the old pipe and, uh, and line it because it's good quality pit cast pipe. Uh, even though it's old, it's apparently very durable, so we're making that analysis right now. So there's still a number of variables out there that we haven't really uh, been able to nail down exactly what the costs are going to be. But, uh, okay. Um, next, um, I think uh, pedestrian numbers in this neighborhood um, would necessitate, um, you know, I'm in disagreement with a few of my neighbors. I do think there's enough pedestrians to uh, justify, at least on this stretch, sidewalks on both sides of the street. Um, I live at number 60, and currently, if you're walking up past my house and you hit D.A. Sullivan, <coughs> 
the sidewalk ends, pedestrians are crossing. Um, there's currently no crosswalk. You, you do have one planned for Highland, but people would walk even further and hit where the sidewalk ends well, the at sidewalk, D.A. Sullivan. The sidewalk ends right here. Right. right. And then they would be crossing without a crosswalk um, on a blind turn. And I would prefer to see a sidewalk all the way up to uh, uh, Woodmont and then continuing as it currently does. Um, so you're, you're proposing sidewalks on both sides to Woodmont and then a <coughs> single sidewalk? Yes. Is. Or the only other alternative would be to decommission the sidewalk um, from Market Street all the way up to D.A. Sullivan. Or, or it could just be um, taken back to this one. Right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, no one has less... Um, front yard frontage than I do at number 60. <laughs> and I, but I would still love to see the sidewalk there. Um, I don't want to see the sidewalk go. Um, and finally, um, the narrowing of uh, North and Market. Um, I do understand uh, the concerns with the traffic backup. Um, but really, that's an issue with the King Street traffic light, as we all know. And I don't think the narrowing of that um, turn, the narrowing of that turn is going to greatly um, help pedestrians in that area. And I don't think will contribute much more to the current traffic backup. Um, the only way to solve the traffic backup is to fix the light at King Street, as you know. So, thank you. I just want to piggyback on the comment about the sidewalks because it seems to be a tough issue. And I was um, I was hoping to see tonight. Maybe I maybe you presented it, but I missed it. That there would at least be one continuous sidewalk on one side of the street from the beginning to the end. Um, and if there isn't, I just I want to urge you to go back and take a look at the possibility of one continuous. I don't think. I'm, I'm agnostic about sidewalks on both sides of the street, but I think it's really important to have one continuous sidewalk so that if you're starting on market and you need to get to the, a, a house on either side that's close to Bates, you only cross once and it's you know near the end of your journey or, or what have you. Maybe that means changing the, the road layout uh, or the, rather the street a little bit uh, near the after Lincoln. Um, but if it's possible, I I just at least like you to look at it. And, and I, I I will follow that train of thinking just a little bit to the, the discussion. That I'm sure will take place a little more from this point on about the the safety question of less or more crosswalks. That if if you do have sidewalks on one side and you reduce the number of opportunities or chances to cross back and forth across. My, one of my greatest concerns with, with potential crosswalk increases, aside from the conveniences of it, but the possible safety factors, is there are places on the stretch, the full length of the road, where drivers take the opportunity to speed up to make up for time that they've lost in the slower part. And <clears throat> My concern is the combination of ice, dusk, sun in the eyes, uh, all of the visual elements that contribute to a possible safety problem with a slow-moving, dark-dressed person at dusk crossing at a crosswalk. So my, my instinct is to, to try to set it up so there are there's a need for less crosswalks by having the configuration of the sidewalk demand less crosswalks and also hopefully decrease that, that safety potential problem with having, having more chances of something happening in a crosswalk because of bad conditions. Um, the, a, a couple of suggestions right where you have there, uh, Owen also mentioned how to deal with the problem of the, of the, of the of backup at, at rush hour. Um, I, would, I would suggest that the engineers, and I'm sure you have, but maybe revisit it, go back and see how <coughs> a, a, a dealing with 
flow of the traffic coming into that intersection, how to do something, and I'm not quite sure what the answer is, I've got a lot of thoughts, but to, to make the flow work just a little bit better. If it worked 10% better, it would help everybody's <coughs> backup from all directions. If the, the backup goes everywhere, <coughs> the, one, of the, one of the key things that I think of at, at the intersection where the left-hand crosswalk is, is that when you're driving in that direction and taking a left-hand turn, the right-of-way is somewhat confusing to everyone. The people coming from King Street say, do I have the right-of-way, or does the guy from my right have the right-of-way? And the, the people coming from Market very often assume they have the right-of-way when they're turning <coughs> left, when in fact I don't think they do, or do they? Well, I would, do they have the right I would tend to argue that they actually have the right-of-way. There's a stop <coughs> sign here, but there's no stop sign on Market. So, but that means, in a way, is that when the stop sign's on that one spot, does it mean that, that I mean, what tends to happen, I, I think I'm right, is that <coughs> the, the Market Street traffic has a preponderance of movement in its left-hand turn direction, and it makes the traffic coming from the other two directions have to wait for the person coming from Market to decide whether, whether they're going to stop for you or not. Um, as they, I mean, very often they don't even stop going. I, I didn't realize there was a stop sign because very often they don't even stop there. There's a stop sign here. There's a stop sign there, but not on the other side. Yeah, so, but, okay. but not over here. <laughs> but some this, way this is kind of. This is the through street. <coughs> I don't know. Has a, has a blinker ever been discussed? Not to my knowledge. I mean, something that would, I mean, I'm not sure that's, that's a good idea, but just as a thought. Something to ease the flow and have it be a more democratic flow process coming in. And I know it's not easy, but it's a, that seems to be the biggest backup dilemma is that it, from one direction or another, when it's really tight, it, it backs way up because of the constriction. John? Again, I, I would encourage you to build this intersection as if that wasn't a problem, because the King Street light needs to be fixed one way or another and that's what causes the backup. What you need to do is is let the left hand turns onto King Street get a five second jump start from the Summer Street traffic so those one or two cars that are holding everyone up can clear out. That's a difficult intersection there with King Street with Summer and North being offset there. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. That's the right of way and who is who as precedence is not clear. Right, so I, I would encourage you not to leave that a wide open intersection um, just because there are backups there. I would encourage, well, it sounds like it's the planning department's uh, project, hopefully, to uh, clean up yeah. the King Street light. Sure, the, just to give you an update on that, the planning department did hire Fussell O'Neill, our West Springfield Mass, to analyzed the Summer King and North Street intersection. They've gotten into, I believe, the 25%. Um, what we're looking at now is we understand that uh, King Street needs a major overhaul also. The pavement down there is 22, 23 years old now. We know it's wearing out. And we're actually looking at a project that will go from downtown up to Finn Street and possibly the bike path or the rail trail as one whole project that will incorporate the intersections of Finn and King and Summer North and King and how to coordinate signals between those two and get traffic flowing a little better. <coughs> That's part of a bigger project. The problem that is is that this is where the TIP funds come in, which are funds allocated from federal and state government. And they typically, once you have a project in the system, it's typically a five to eight year schedule before they go into construction. Sure. Wayne had something for that intersection. I'm not sure exactly what it was, Jim. Just one quick question. It may not be in the scope of this meeting at all, but I'm asked to set a neighborhood meeting. Nobody quite knew the answer, but are there any known complications that can happen when, with a system this old, water sewer system this old, hooking into the um, owner's line back, like where there's jostling or whatever, <coughs> and there's potential for damage. I'm just wondering if there are known problems that could occur. The only known problem
problems I've seen is typically not with sewer, but more water, old galvanized piping get pretty brittle and frail. When we replace the water lines, we'll go up to the property line, we'll send a new curb box in, and typically we go a foot or two into the property to get good copper pipe in there, and that's where we stop our delivery of our service line. But, uh, I mean, old utilities fail. The, uh, the water, the sewer lines out here are probably close to 100 years old at this point, well past their useful life. I mean, they're old vitrified <coughs> clay systems out there. Uh, the water line is the back feed to the industrial park, and that's one of our concerns. We want to make sure we get the, the proper line in there because if the 12 inch main coming down, bridge road goes down, we still have to feed the industrial park with water somehow. Mm -hmm. So, are there any proactive measures that um, um, property owners can take to kind of like you know, get their own systems evaluated, or? Um, actually, uh, Jim might be able to speak on that behalf a little bit. He's preparing some uh, work for the Board of Public Works on having a, uh, a company, uh, basically, residents could buy into a service agreement with this private company, that if you did have a problem on your property, that they could come in and, and fix your water line, fix your sewer line. It's an annual fee to be paid, rather than all of a sudden you have a water line break in your front yard and you got to hire a contractor at a huge expense because it's an emergency. This company is kind of in town and they take care of this on a regular basis, but Jim might want to speak a little more on that. That's pretty much it. There, there, there's a private company or two that offer, it's basically uh, insurance for homeowners for their water and sewer connection lines because typically cities are just uh, responsible for the construction utility a little bit of a right away. Homeowners are responsible for everything from there to your house. There aren't a lot of failures of, of these types of systems. Um, some people like to have insurance and, and not have to incur a large cost if their water service line breaks, for example. So some people are comfortable with insurance, but it's a low risk. We don't see a lot of these types of failures. Um, and certainly during the course of a project like this, we'll you know, do everything that we can um, in terms of the connection and, thing, not, and things, not to, not to disturb anything. But you know, as Ned mentioned, it's, it's an old neighborhood. We really don't have any idea of the age of someone some of the uh, connections that go to the homes um, could be really old, so it's it's hard to say. So no, we, can, we can get the name of the next company sure. from them. Like I said, we'll, almost if we run into a problem, we're replacing your service to the property line as it has been mentioned. But if we run into a problem, um, we'll let you know that, oh, it looks like you're right away. This is like you know beating the old roadway to death kind of thing, but um, it was suggested that perhaps the issue around uh, the poor condition of the roadway between Lincoln and Bates uh, rests in a large part to uh, um, because of the poor drainage there that. sand is that you fill a solid, ostensibly a solid area with enough water that it, that it, it essentially liquefies the soil and, and so everything becomes unstable. Um, and so it would make sense to me that if the, there's standing water like that because there's no place for the water to go, it's going to attempt to go down <coughs> under the roadway and hence make the substrate much less uh, able to withstand the pounding as some of these larger vehicles um, go across it. Um, do you feel that the uh, improved storm drain uh, system up there is really going to make it, you know, feasible enough? Because the the, the milling and the and the redoing <laughs> seems like a more of a stopgap, and it strikes me that you know we're economically or fiscally cutting off our noses to spite our faces if we don't go ahead and do the whole street. Um, I understand that, that there's been, you know, that the utilities, as you mentioned, have been replaced in there, so there's no need to really do the major amount of work. Um, but nonetheless, to, to make an assumption about the quality of the, the road surface 
when it's recognized that the, the, you know, the rest from market on up is going to be literally dug up and totally replaced, why is the city finding it you know, feasible to, in my layman's opinion, skim on this other section that seems to be the worst? Well, originally we had talked about actually doing mill and overlay over uh, for the section from uh, Market Street to uh, along Market Street to Walnut Street as well, but we're planning on uh, bringing the place sewer line all the way down to Market Street, and that's enough of a disturbance that we decided, well, we really should do full depth reconstruction all the way along that area so we don't end up with uh, a spot that uh, is, is uh, we're going to be doing enough disturbance down there. I, I totally agree with you. I think we need to take a closer look at that section up by Bates Avenue. Um, I think, you know, even though the utilities have been replaced there, uh, you're right, there was a, an area of quicksand in there, and uh, I think it's a concern that we get a, a good solid for our base in there. So let's we'll take a look and have a look at it. Run the drag at 234 North Street, and you're talking about the drainage. Now there's a, a sewer up by the industrial park, and then the next one is in front of our house at 230 North Street. Storm drain, yeah, storm drain. Storm drain. Yep. And then I have, we have a neighbor, and he goes and puts his leaves in the street. So when we get the storm, then it comes and plugs up our sewer. Then when it's raining real hard, we go out many a times at the rake, and it's pouring rain to release our drain. But it, as you notice, it'll be in the industrial park. Mm -hmm. It's the first one, and then it comes around the corner, and ours is the next drain. Yeah, there needs to be a storm drain at the corner of Lincoln Ave, uh, of uh, Bates Street, Day mm -hmm. Avenue, and North Street. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a storm drain there. Which neighbor is that? Because they, when they did the road, they didn't even come. There used to be a dry bridge there. A dry bridge. The train ran over over to Amherst, and we've been there a long time. Once they took the, the, the dry bridge down, mm -hmm. and they regraded the road, and then subsequently they did the industrial park. They didn't allow for that water flow, and the water goes down, and you know, and that creates a problem. <coughs> and, and that's and that's going to exacerbate that if you don't dig down and put in a whole solid. Because this, this gentleman is right. Mm -hmm. There's quicksand in there. There's a section, there's a little area in yeah. there, right, right at the intersection. Of right. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say thank you for providing this information and having this conversation with us. Clearly, many of us have uh, opinions. How do we get those opinions back to the right people to express them since it sounds like there's still a process going on? Um, I, I think Laura has some cards up front here, and I'll put some cards up as well. Um, you can reach us at the DPW, um, and we'll be happy to listen to whatever input we can provide. Um, we need to make a good engineering decision from our point of view, and uh, you know, just listening to everybody this evening, you should uh, you know, be aware that there's no way that everybody is going to needs are going to be satisfied. So we'll do the best we can based on the input that, that we've received. Yeah, I just want to. I wanted to stand up. <laughs> I wanted to sit down. <laughs> I just want to say what I've, I've been taking notes, listening to everybody uh, as as we've been uh, talking tonight. And I started to to put some sort of takeaways down in terms of the comments that we're hearing from folks, issues that people are concerned about. There are uh, quite a number of common themes, which is which is good. I think we're kind of narrowing the focus of some of the things that we need to look at as we finalize the design. Um, we always have Adam's, we've always got the tape to go back to if we do that, but um, I've got a few notes here, and it seems like um, a prevalence of comments are about um, reevaluating the location of sidewalks and crosswalks, certainly hearing what people are saying about that, um, the comments from the folks from DA Sullivan, there was a lot of great information coming out tonight, um, the old Twin Cleaners building and knowing, understanding better the, the amount of traffic and um, pedestrian and bike traffic there, I think is, you know, this is all great information for us to be able to, to take that and, and look at the, uh, the drawings as we've, as we've laid them out. Um, the Market Street intersection, clearly, a lot of good comments on that. I think, you know, we'll need to go back and, and take a look and see how 
uh, <coughs> what the planning department's looking at and what their schedule is for reevaluating re the light and the turning. The, the turning lanes there is going to be, um, will have a large impact on, on what the traffic ends up being in that intersection. So we, but we do want to take a look at that to see what the general flow of traffic is and, and what we can do as part of this project. Even somebody said if we can make it 10% better, then that's great. Then we'll, we can certainly shoot for the 10% mark um, as part of this project. Um, there were other comments about um, you know, grant curbing, concrete sidewalk, and I think David did a pretty nice job at articulating what the costs are and what our overall budget is. And if we have less sidewalk, you can build, you know, you can, maybe you can build more concrete sidewalk, or if you build less sidewalk, maybe you can, can put in more grant curbing, or whatever it is, it's sort of a balance between what we have for money and what, and what we can accomplish um, out there as part of the project. And then the last thing that I had written down, and there, there, may be, there may be others, but these were just things I was knowing as we went along. In terms of utility phasing, a lot of good questions about the utilities. Um, there will be a lot of utility work as part of this project, so making sure during the project, project that we communicate with people and let you know what's happening, um, both in terms of talking to people individually. I know the last time when we do large projects, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put weekly schedules of contractor activity up on our website. So you just have a basic sense of, okay, what block are they going to be at this week? And you can get a sense of, oh, geez, all right, they're going to be outside my door. I'm going to want to know what they're doing. So you'll, you'll have a little bit of a heads up in terms of where the activity is going to be for a certain week. And then we will have an engineer. One of our engineers will be out there um, for the most part during the course of the project. So you can talk to our folks on the site or you can get in touch with us in the office as the project starts uh, if you have specific questions during the duration of the project. So, um, I, I think it was a great meeting tonight, it was really a, a lot of terrific input. Um, certainly David and Felix um, and myself. Anybody you want to talk to about the department, you've got some other comments or things that come up after the meeting, we'll certainly be happy to, to talk to you further about it. Do you plan to have another community meeting in the next few months, or is this it? I think this is it. Um, we really need to develop a final design so that we can get out to bid in a timely fashion Susan, can you put up, if you can at all, put a, a general timeline up on your website? We need to know what the general timeline is first, and that's yeah. going to be dependent on when we can finish the plans and specifications. Um, our <clears throat> ambitious goal is to have the plans and specifications uh, finished by the end of March so that we can go out to bid in early April when the bidding climate is still favorable. The sooner that we can do it, the better, the more uh, response that we're likely to have from contractors and the more competitive the bids will be. So uh, that's our goal at this point. Yes. And uh, at that time, will we be able to go to the website and see your <coughs> final design and the, the ideas that um, you feel are how this thing's going to, to look? We can look at putting up uh, at least we wouldn't want to put up all the plan sheets because it's probably going to be about 25 plan sheets. No, but I mean something like this. Something like this. Going to be able to it's not going to be quite as elegant. It probably won't be shaded. It will be more, more like a construction plan. Um, but we can certainly, there will be plan sheets that will basically just be surface treatment. And I think that's mostly what people are interested uh, in right now. You don't know, need to know the exact alignment of the water and sewer and where the manholes are and that sort of thing. So yes, we could certainly put up... Uh, some plan sheets of uh, the service treatment. And if you don't mind, one other question. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I used to live in Children Falls, and um, I was on the fire department. And we'd go around, and we'd, we had the benefit of having you know, hydrants. And so we would always check the flow in our hydrants. And uh, very often, that would really uh, do a number on the water quality, because you know stuff would get knocked loose. We'd be running a lot of water. We use the same. Uh, water lines, it's potable water that we were using. Uh, we did have a separate line. Um, and I'm curious to know uh, what might happen to water quality as this work goes on, because I can imagine, you know, pipes being taken apart, new pipes being put in, you know, will we, will we see that uh, impact the water quality in terms of, uh, I don't know, clarity, particulates, things like that, or is this something that is um, done well enough so that um, we won't see uh, an impact on the water quality? Or does 
that make sense, what, I, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I'll, I'll say something that if I'm too far off base, you can let me know. Um, my sense is that there really shouldn't be much impact to the water quality, and so it would be uh, very short term. As we mentioned, there's likely to be uh, temporary water that's going to need to be put in place while some of the, the work goes on. Um, we'll be taking out older pipe that's uh, heavily tuberculated. There's a lot of uh, buildup within the pipe, and we'll be putting in new pipe that will all need to be uh, pressurized and chlorinated before it's ever delivered to you. So it'll be clear that, uh, that the water that comes out of the new pipes is, is uh, clean and clear. Yeah, I was just going to say we're still working on um, we're still working on what exactly we're going to do with water pipes. David had mentioned the possible possibility of cleaning and lining the old pipes that are there versus replacing them. You obviously are a man of experience and understand that if you start jostling things or you start running water out of the fire hydrant, that you, you do have the ability to loosen up some of the regulation that's in there. Some of these pipes that are up, you know, 1896 or something. So, you know, there's, there's clearly a lot of uh, iron buildup within these pipes and there is the ability for some of this stuff to get loosened. Um, if there's an activity that happens, I think for the most part, um, you shouldn't see something like that. But if we come across an activity during the construction that may cause a loosening of some of this iron material, we could let people know again that geez, we're going to be doing this particular activity during this week. You might see some problems with the water quality. The water would still be drinkable, but it might have some particulate um, matter in it. As I'm sure it sounds like you've seen that. So um, we can let people know. Um, it's it's not unlike um, when the city does flushing of our water mains to clean them out. Right. We'll let people know we're going to be in your ward. We're doing this type of activity, and you might see some discoloration of your water. It's not a water quality issue in terms of portability. It's an aesthetic thing, and we can let folks know. So how, how would you do that? Is this just something that gets popped up on the website? And it's it's on us to sort of pay attention, or will you somehow we can, you know we get robo calls about the about the you know we can snow we, emergencies and things like that. We could probably bug you at nauseum. Um, <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, I can use you know, you know we, we, we could we could use the reverse nine one one system for that. But we're going to have someone in. We're going to use you know we've got people in the field, so we can knock on doors and just tell you you know or leave people notes in the mailbox or something to communicate. So we're a little more active. We're not just putting stuff up on the website and telling people these are what's up there. You should have known. You know, well, we can we can work on communications. A little bit and better. likewise, great. thank you. And likewise, if something comes up on your end that you're unsure about what's going on, please notify us and let us know if you're having concerns about anything you might want to see. Just a quick uh, material question: Is the new piping the, the areas that you put down new piping? When is the material itself? Is it the, is it also iron like the old piping, or is it a different, completely different material? Well, the, wa the water piping would be uh, be ductile iron is the current standard. Um, some of the piping that's in, in the ground now is cast iron, but it's uh, it's currently very good quality uh, during that uh, particular uh, period of time. So that's why we're considering uh, cleaning it and lining it, at least a section of it. But there is some undersized pipe in the North Street that we would definitely be upgrading and replacing anyway. Uh, sewer uh, piping is uh, PVC or polyvinyl chloride. That's the standard uh, these days. The DPW standard for drainage pipe is uh, class four concrete, uh, which means that it's a very thick walled and uh, reinforced concrete that lasts a, a very long time. So those are the three different pipe types for the three different systems that we have up here. And, and the storm drainage uh, circumference is going to stay the same, or will it be up, upgraded somehow? There will probably be some uh, additional catch, catch basins yeah. extended from the, uh, from the current uh, systems that are out there, uh, but I don't think there's going to be too much new drainage pipe laid I mean, in terms of extending the system. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.